following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. We are back. A's baseball, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. And my buddy's here, Jerry Feitelberg. How are you? I'm doing great today, Ralph. It's been a rainy day, but so what? We need it in California. It's great to have it. And uh, as I said, we need it. There's going to be snow up in the Sierra, and people can go skiing and enjoy the, all the facilities. I tell people we only have two seasons. We have fall and we have spring. And That's there's right. no real summer in Northern California. It may get hot for a few days here and there. And there's no real winter. But uh, sometimes we'll get some real brisk fall days. Uh, yeah, occasionally. Compared- Occasionally. Occasionally. And uh, they were almost appreciated. Um, yesterday was really chilly, you know, or the day before, and yesterday was uh, was much nicer. So um, oh, what are you going so to do? We have to we have Take to tell the good with the better. When we, say, when we say it's really chilly, it's probably only 55 degrees. And if you're up in Maine or you're here in Minnesota, and it's minus nine, and you say, "Well, it's chilly at 55." They look at you and say, "What are you guys sick?" <laughs> that's that's absolutely right. Um, every now and again, we have the equalizer, the earthquake. Um, yeah. I had John Leandakis as a guest on one of the shows the other day, and he was a videographer at the '69. Um, uh, not 69, 89 earthquake uh, on the first day, and uh, he happened to have his camera, and he was uh, he did a great documentary on that that was honored at the Hall of Fame. As a yeah, fact. that was the World Series. That, that was yeah. what game hey, three. Hey, we of the have World some Series? great news. I, if yes, I'm not mistaken, uh, did I interpret this right? Do we have? Finalization on a stadium is that the way? No, um, it, it is not. It is not final yet. There's a long way to go. Oh, these are pro- okay. these are proposed plans that they are trying to do. The A's held a press conference yesterday and they made an announcement that they plan to build a stadium at the Howard Terminal site, which is along the estuary in Oakland not very far from Jack London Square. Uh, There are several problems. They have to negotiate with the Port of Oakland for the land. They do not own the land yet. You have to remember, it's going to be a privately financed stadium. The A's are going to front all the money, but they don't want to do it until until they own the land, so they've got to buy the land from the Port of Oakland, and that hasn't happened. Also, as part of the... Do you see any, let's take it one at a time, do you see any hitches in that? I I, I don't know. The only hitch could be is agreeing on a price uh, for the land. But I don't, uh, I think that they've laid the groundwork. I think after the debacle that they encountered last year at Laney College, that they would have had their ducks in a row before making the announcement. So while... It's not finalized. I think they have enough assurances from the Port of Oakland that they're going to be able to buy the land. I would hope that that that's itself is very, very good news. What's yes. next? The ecological studies, no doubt. They have to do an environmental impact review, uh, which is they, you know, they they have neighbors next door. Schnitzer Steel is next door uh, at the on the Port of Oakland. And they, they dump stuff into the into the ground. Who knows what's in the ground? So they got to make sure that the that the ground is uh, is safe and that they're not disturbing anything else in the environment to build the stadium. So that has to be done. I don't think that that will be a problem. That's more of a formality. Uh, but and they're talking so five years. Am I correct? 2023, in five years. Sure. So it takes about two to three years to build the stadium. So that gives them a two-year window to get everything done. The construction probably will start in 2020. 
Did That's they talk the about why the decision was made to go there as opposed to where they are now? They didn't. They did not discuss that. They did not discuss. They they felt apparently they felt that in the long term interest would be better served having the ballpark at the Howard Terminal. There are certain uh, problems that have to be addressed. As How are you, you know, going to get there, number one? How about BART? That's number two. Okay. How are we going to get there? There are there are the streets leading into Howard Terminal and Jack London Square are narrow. And if they have a ball game, there's going to be a lot of clogged traffic. And in addition, I don't think there's a lot of parking over in that area right now. So they're going to have to figure out what to do with the cars. They are proposing building an aerial gondola that will transport 6,000 people an hour from somewhere in Oakland. They didn't specify exactly where. They may have to build two, one from uh, West Oakland Bar Station and one from 12th Street Station. I don't know if those are feasible. A gondola like a ferry? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a flyover so that goes over the street so to get them to the ballpark. Uh, if, you, if you're from New York, and I know you are, they have a gondola that goes over the river. And the same thing when we were in uh, Singapore. They have gondolas tra- transporting people all over the city. So Gondolas, like when they float around in, on Ven- in Venice. No, no, they yeah, but this would be an aerial gondola, I, and I don't know. Okay, okay, it would be like a, like an elevated train. Yeah, it would be an elevated train, and I don't know, how, but even 6,000 people an hour, if you're going to have 34,000 people, it's going to take you five hours to transport 30,000 people. So they got to have other, other things Who's going to pay for that? Well, the A's are going to have to finance it, but the, the second part, the second part of the proposal is most interesting. They are proposing to take over to buy to buy the assets at uh, the current Coliseum site, where the Oracle Arena is, and the current baseball stadium. They will they propose to keep Oracle Arena intact and use it for concerts and other events to help. Uh, to help bring in revenue. In addition, they plan on keeping the field for community use, but you know, dismantling the stadium. They still have the ballpark there. Ricky Henderson Field will still be there, but it will be used for community purposes. They also plan to build offices, retail, and uh, other community uh, projects. So they're that, going to buy, in other words, they're going to buy the site. Right. And they've made an offer that, to the city. But they, they haven't, there's two entities that they have to purchase it from, the city and the county. They made a, a proposal to the city, but they haven't heard back from the city on that. And that could be a snag, and that could be a fly in the ointment. Why so, should that you know, affect the ball? If they're buying the ballpark, why would this affect that? The lease would be what, done. Why can't they just leave it? They could. They could, but they want to be responsible citizens. They're part of the community, and they think that they would, that would be more uh, more beneficial for the community if they did, if they put this package together. And the revenues that they would get from these, from retail and the rents and the offices would help uh, offset some of the costs of the new stadium. Why don't they build the retail and just build the new stadium in the parking lot and make the the old stadium level it and make that a parking lot, like they and go from there? You're only dealing with one entity. I thought the whole thing was to avoid doing business with the combination of the city and the county. You're still Uh, doing business with the city and the county. Well, that that portion of it may may not uh, and again the, the the A's have made a proposal to buy it buy it for 131 million and they've had no response from the city so i don't know if that that is critical to the 
to the building of the new stadium or not. It may be, may not be. I don't know how the finances are structured. Uh, it seems a bit convoluted to me when I, when they put that in as maybe a caveat of something that they had to do. But uh, as I said, we're, we're, we don't know all the details yet of the of the transactions. It's, it's a long way from being a done deal. It, that's the sad part. And the fans have seen this before, and they've seen it fall through. So Yes, uh, and what with Oakland acquiring the rights to Las Vegas and the way things are, I could see them being gone in a heartbeat. I really well, can. Possibly. Possibly. They could have a beautiful... A beautiful stadium in Las Vegas. You know, it, it, it's kind of warm to play baseball there during the summertime. You know, it doesn't doesn't cool off in the evening like it does up here. They have to have a that, a, that is true. A dome. That is they true. They have to have a dome. But, um, they have to have a dome stadium. So there's a lot involved. Let's let's give the A's the benefit of the doubt. We don't know what's going to transpire. Uh, they're having an open house today. Uh, over at the offices on Harrison, and they're they're very community minded. They want the community support. So let's hope and uh, let's hope that something comes of this. It looks like yeah. a beautiful stadium, state of the art stadium, thirty four thousand people. The very and the nice part. It will looking at the positives. Uh, it took a blow there for for a second because. Uh, throwing in the transaction of the existing site really uh, puts a fl- as you say puts a fly uh, in the ointment uh, potentially. But now that I get to think about it, can you imagine having two gems overlooking each other across the bay? Uh, both teams playing playing at night. Uh, that would be pretty cool. It would be. It would be. And at the same token. Just stop and think. If for some reason they can't get the Howard Terminal site, they've got the plans for the 34,000 seat ballpark that they could put at the current Coliseum site. They could, uh, you know, take the parking lot, build it. Yeah, and, the one, and, the site that they they're secure in, the site that has board right. already. Um, right. Has parking. I think that that would be nice. Or did they or talk about how far along they are in the negotiations? No, we don't know. Oh, they have a they have a hundred and twenty day uh, uh, period where they're going to do some stuff uh, in the hundred and twenty days. Let me. I put that on my on the blog last night, and I'll pull up and see what that. See what that was involved. Well, it gives them the right they, to make they, a make a study or yeah, take a me, study. Have it. Leave a study. I'll have it up. Well, I'll have I'm it up. somewhat encouraged, my friend, and um, I guess if you're an A's fan, you have to have faith. Oh yeah, I, I, I we're all hoping for it. We're all hoping for it. Uh, let's okay. see. The 120-day action plan. Number one, they are gathering additional feedback from the community and other people. Number two, they will begin the environmental review process at Howard Terminal. Number three, they will negotiate an agreement with the Port of Oakland. Number four, they will develop a framework with public officials regarding development plans for the Oakland Coliseum site. And number five, they will create a framework for economic and community benefits. So these are, these are they're going to do into the next four months, 120 days. The A's plan to develop the Coliseum into a general community center. They will keep Oracle Arena intact and will use it for concerts and other events. They plan new affordable housing, which is good as well as offices, retail, restaurants, and other public spaces to help revitalize the neighborhood. And I said the okay, A's okay, Jerry, the not, none yeah. of this really pertains to the stadium itself. No. Ballpark, as it were. It's not going to be a stadium. It's good. That sounds nice, a ballpark. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I and, hope they name it the Ricky Henderson Ballpark, and then Ricky Ricky well, have two. Uh, well, Ricky would have to pay money to have his name at the Ricky Henderson Ballpark, so uh, I think they're going to have your name naming rights. Naming rights so, uh, will not go to Ricky Ricky Henderson uh, or Reggie Jackson, for that matter. No. Um, you can no, imagine. But they, but they can build a beautiful a museum adjacent to the ballpark, uh, like uh, similar to the one that the 49ers have down at uh, the ballpark in Santa Clara. And you can visit that separately. You don't have to go to the ball game to do that. And that, that was worth seeing. Uh, I think that uh, I'm not sure if the Giants have done that yet. The Giants have uh, uh, have the statues of the players around the ballpark, but I don't think they have a museum per se in the ballpark for people to visit with a lot of the history of the ballpark. That would be nice. No, but, but they do have the walls of um – you know, they have a New York Giant display on the walls yeah. that top sure. notch. They honor they honor the New York Giants more so than the New York Mets honor the New York Giants. The New York yeah. Mets are in a stadium that is or um that looks just like Ebbets Field. They pay very, very little homage to the New York Giants. And, uh, well well that's because the Giants franchise is alive and well. Uh, and, and, of course, the Mets took some from the Dodgers, some from the Giants in their uniforms. Remember, they had the orange and the blue uniforms. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I think you know, I think the Giants, uh, I don't know if they're and the Yankee the pinstripes as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the old yeah, well, NY. And the, um, they didn't have the orange uh, button on the top when they started. It was a blue button. And they made and it the, an orange button. And the Dodgers had the the Dodgers had the white button, didn't they, on their blue cap? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So, tell me, um, anything new on the trade market, or any anything to look forward to? And where where would they start at this point? They really built a nice foundation last year. You got to go pitching, pitching, pitching. Is there a chance maybe they can get Sonny Gray back? And um, maybe perhaps his uh, head will be in a better place. Uh, what do you think about that? That's a possibility. Uh, the rumors have been that he's going to Cincinnati because his college coach is, uh, is, is uh, on the Cincinnati Red staff. So oh, there's really? a possibility that, yeah, they'd be traded to Cincinnati. But you never know. With Billy Bean, he's had guys come and he's traded guys and brought them back. He, he brought Canseco back. He brought uh, Jason Giambi back. I wouldn't be surprised if he took Sonny Gray back. It wouldn't. I don't think Sonny Gray could command a huge salary at this point in his career. And if you give him, uh, if he could give him 25 starts or give him uh, 10 to 12 wins, why not bring him back? He pitched very well. And as you know, and we've talked about this, there are players that play well back east, and there are players yeah. that don't. And um, yeah. Ed Whitson always comes to mind, and a few others. Sonny Gray was prototypical uh, along those lines. He just well, never the, did get it together in New York. And he's still a young guy. He's got playoff experience with the A's, yeah, and I, I think um, that'd be a guy who wouldn't hurt my feelings if he came back. Not all. He's 29 years old, and he should be at the prime of his career. But there are some other guys out there. You know, they, they had Edwin Jackson, uh, and they should sign him. He pitched very, very well for him. He's a free agent. Mm-hmm. They had uh, Mike Fires. I think they may, be on, may have Fires on contract for the next year. And they're going to look for guys that are, that are undervalued and that, they can, that have that potential or looking for a chance to rebuild their career. And that would be Sonny Gray's position right now. Because he he did not he was hurt a couple of years and then he went to New York and uh, he brought him out in New York. So he, any he free agent signings that they have to make a decision on? Well, they got a couple of guys that they got to make a decision on their own free agents. One is oh, actually three guys they should make decisions on. One is you know my favorite guy Jonathan Lucroy. Lucroy 
didn't hit a lot. He hit about 250, 240, 250. But he was terrific handling that pitching staff. He really was the glue that held the staff together. He did a super job for them. And mm -hmm. they could get him at, at a reasonable price. The second guy they have to sign is Jed Lowry. Lowry is 35 and he's, and he's a free agent. But a lot of clubs will shy away because of his age. But he, he was very good defensively. I think he only made four errors during the whole season. He had, uh, what, over 20 homers, 25 homers, 99 RBI. Is a doubles machine. Terrific, terrific year. And he likes playing here. No, it really wouldn't surprise me if he went back to Boston. Well, yeah, Boston is looking for a second baseman. Uh, and yeah. uh, Kinsler was Kinsler was a free agent, but Kinsler was 37. So I think, and of course the the A's are grooming Franklin Barreto for second base, but so far he's not he's not shown that he can play a whole season. So I think that they hey, were they picked up a pitcher system. as well, a, a recuperating pitcher for Sonny Gray. And um, how is he? I think he was coming back from Tommy John surgery. And I'm wondering how he's doing. I, I, I don't. They have they have four pitchers coming back from from uh, Tommy John. They got uh, Gra oh, Graveman, Graveman is out. Uh, Graveman is out. Jarrell Cotton is out. Cotton was injured in spring training, so he might be back sooner. Probably be back in May or or June next year. And they well, have I wonder Johnson. what they would have been like had Cotton stayed healthy and came into into uh, a good groove because that was a big blow early on, and yet they came back. Billy Bean really has to be um, given an awful lot of credit for that one. And, and got uh, of got course, Bo Bell. For yeah, they, yeah, they they did a super job. All the, they lost all five starters to injury. They still have a Daniel Megden who's in and out. Uh, again, Edwin Jackson I'd like to see back. Mike Fires. Uh, they have to make decisions whether they want to continue with Trevor Cahill or Brett Anderson. Um, right. Anderson pitched well at the Coliseum, but he didn't pitch well on the road. Uh, Anderson was hit or miss. He, he doesn't throw very hard, so uh, he probably got lit up a couple times, but they they have to rebuild the starting rotation. And there there are there are some guys out there, Lance Lynn maybe. Are uh, they planning on re-signing um, Familia, the former Met? From what I hear, they are. Uh, they would like to re-sign him. And okay. With Familia, with Familia, when he comes in, that's when you start popping Xanax because he, his performances sometimes are brilliant. And sometimes you get so nervous, you say, what's going to happen next with him? But overall, I think he's a, he was a good addition for the club. He gives them another setup guy to go along with uh, Trevino, to go along with uh, Blake Trinan. Uh, and, and, again, I think they signed uh, the guy, uh, uh, Fernando Rodney, for another year. Oh, that's a good move. This guy is like the... The, the bunny that keeps on ticking. He yeah. is. Um, he must be 43 years old by now. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. As, as, as long as he can keep on going, look at Big Sexy. Absolutely. He's 30, 46 years old looking for a job. Absolutely. We're almost 40 ourselves. <laughs> you got it. All right, Jerry. We'll catch you next week, my friend. You stay healthy. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, Mexico next week, next Thursday. I'm going to be in Cabo. Oh, Texas. world traveler. What part of Mexico are you going to? Oh, we're going to Cabo, down at the end of uh, Baja, California. Okay. Now, uh, keep your papers in order because getting across the border these days is a bit of an, an adventure. Oh, yeah. Well, we're flying over, fortunately. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's good. I was worried about yeah, you. But, too. you know, you have, you have to take your passport these days. Yes. Uh, so, so we got we got all that stuff ready to go. Uh, we got we're very fortunate. Uh, we're going with another couple. It's the couple that we went on the the cruise with last year. And uh, beautiful. And I was all recovered from her ails, ailments. Yes, yeah, she is. She's back back to normal. It turned out beautiful. to be a virus. 
turned out to be a virus, and it ran its course, and she's back to normal. All right. So, when you get back, we'll do a Little Nations. Yeah, well, yeah, I would love to. Uh, we All have, right. uh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I have to go up to Alameda when I come back anyway. So if you, uh, between the 10th and the 15th, someone there, I'll give you, I'll give you a heads up. Look forward to it. Stay healthy. And if you're listening out there, it's A's Baseball, past, present, and future, comfortably zoned radio network. Thank you very much, Jerry Feidelberg. Stay well, my friend. Okay, take care. Bye-bye now. Adios. Thanks, everybody, for listening. The proceeding was a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you for listening.